Blender versus Maya. Both of these programs are incredibly powerful with almost limitless potential. But which one is better? Which one will allow you to rise above the competition? Both of these programs bring many advantages to the table, but only one can be crowned champion. So today we're going to examine the most important categories and either award a point to Blender or Maya. So by the end of the video, you'll see which is the more capable tool. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our first category, learning curve. Since the release of Blender 2.8, it has become widely known for its user-friendly interface and gradual learning curve, while Maya, being an industry standard software, is a little bit harder to pick up. Blender is also aided by its massive community that can teach you almost anything that you want to know, ensuring that you have the information to create anything you can imagine. Now, there are many great Maya instructors as well, but the sheer amounts of Blender tutorials and courses teaching you anything from basic animation to complex character creation is wild. So because of that, Blender takes this category. Our next category is community. This is a category that is extremely important but it's often overlooked because without an expansive and informational community, it's really hard to learn anything new without hundreds of hours of trial and error. And this is especially true when you're first starting out. Outside of just tutorials and courses, the larger community surrounding a program, the more support it has for its respective plugins or add-ons as well. If we were only looking at tutorials, then this would be an easy win for Blender, which many people think has an almost cult-like following. There are hundreds or possibly even thousands of Blender creators that can guide you through almost any problem imaginable. This is largely due to Blender being free and open source which has made it the most popular 3D program among hobbyists and freelance 3D artists. It has essentially no barrier to entry. So Blender being free and open source obviously has many advantages. It allows add-on developers to implement their add-ons directly into Blender because they can access the source code. But this also creates a massive problem. Many industry standard plugins are not compatible with Blender. Not because Blender couldn't develop systems to support them, but because it's open source. Blender being open source would allow anyone using say Ziva or XParticles or some other premier plugin to directly access the source code and therefore pirate it. This would be an absolute disaster for large plugin developers who have sunk thousands or even millions of dollars into development of their particular plugin. And this is a huge reason why Blender is not yet industry standard. Now, this doesn't necessarily pose a huge problem when you're first starting out because industry standard plugins like Ziva have huge costs associated with them. But if your end goal is to fully deck out your 3D program of choice, regardless of cost, then Blender's probably not the best option. For all of those reasons, I'm going to call this category a draw. But let me give a quick caveat. If you're a hobbyist or somebody just starting out in 3D and you don't plan on working for a studio one day, then this category is absolutely a win for Blender. But if you want those industry grade plugins and you're gonna pursue a job in a studio, then this category is a win for Maya. But overall, I'll call this category a draw. Our next category is modeling. Modeling is essentially the backbone of any render. So having a robust tool set that will allow you to create anything you can imagine is super important. Blender and Maya both have a very similar hard surface modeling systems. The tools go by different names, but foundational tools like bridge, loop cut, extrude, and fill exist in both programs. Additionally, both Blender and Maya are very modular. You can add add-ons to Blender or plugins to Maya to specially customize your modeling system and make it even more efficient. For Maya, some great modeling plugins are ones like Modit, Plugit, and Xmods, and there are many more. While Blender has add-ons like Hard Ops and Box Cutter that help to refine the program. Yet while Blender and Maya both have very similar hard surface modeling systems, Maya has something special. 
has something called NURBS, which stands for Non-Uniform Rational Beast Blinds. This is similar to the curve system that you find in Blender, but it has much more functionality. It allows you to model in a way that's somewhat similar to plasticity a powerful CAD program. This creates a much more organic modeling system and aids in creation of things like cars and planes that have sinuous flow. Now, Blender also has a curve system that's somewhat similar to the nerve system inside of Maya, but really it pales in comparison to what you can do. There's limited functionality. Hopefully in future updates, we'll see further development to Blender's own curved system, but for now, Maya's is much better. Then there is the final form of modeling present in both of these two programs, sculpting. While they both have the ability to sculpt, Blender has a much more developed system. It's very similar to what you would find in the industry standard program, ZBrush. But instead of sculpting in 2.5D or an orthographic view in ZBrush, you're sculpting in full 3D inside a Blender. But if you wanna see a Blender versus ZBrush comparison, you can watch my Blender versus Cinema 4D video. Maya, on the other hand, has many useful sculpting features that help to create small details on characters. But compared to Blender, its tools are very rudimentary. Because of all of this, I'm gonna call this category a draw. Both of these programs have about comparable hard surface modeling systems, and where Maya has NURBS, Blender has sculpting. Really, it's up to your personal preference if you would use NURBS or sculpting more. Our next category is animation. This is an interesting one, because this is something that both of these programs excel at. However, there is a clear winner. Both Blender and Maya have excellent rigging and animation tools, but Maya is able to pull away through its plugins. Like we talked about earlier, Blender cannot use industry standard plugins because it's open source. And while you can still create complex rigs and animations inside of Blender, the industry standard plugins that Maya has access to are what make it so amazing. That, along with the advanced built-in rigging and animation tools inside of Maya, is why is the software a choice for most large studios. Animation is Maya's specialty as a software, so it's really no surprise that it takes this category. However, Blender isn't slacking either. Blender's tools for rigging and animation are still capable of performing 95% of what Maya can do completely free. While Maya has many amazing plugins, Blender also has a ton of awesome add-ons, both free and paid, that help to speed up your animation workflow. But all things considered, Maya wins this category. Our next category is rendering. This is a category that is extremely important because without a fast and realistic render engine, both your efficiency and quality of work will tank. So for this comparison, we're gonna be looking at Cycles versus Arnold. Obviously, Blender has EV built into it as well, but that's a real-time render engine, while well, both Cycles and Arnold are ray traced. Ray trace render engines are slower than real-time render engines like EV or Lumen, but they yield the best results. That's because they aren't cutting any corners. They accurately calculate light bounces and different values to give you the most realistic results. Both Arnold and Cycles are excellent render engines, but there is a clear winner. Cycles is a GPU-based render engine, while Arnold is CPU-based. They both work very well, but because Cycles is GPU-based, it's simply faster. Now, there are optimizations that you can make to both programs that will bring them closer in line at the speed test, but at default settings, Cycles wins this category. This is for both the viewport and the final render. So while they both look good, I'm going to give this point to Blender. Finally, let's get into the most important category, price. This is the category that it all comes down to. Obviously, personal preference plays a huge factor as well, but if you're not willing to pay the $1,875 a year to work with Maya, then it's simply not gonna be worth it. However, there is a small workaround for the price of Maya for smaller creators. If you make less than $100,000 a year with your projects and you live within the supported list of countries, you can use Indie Maya, which comes in at a price of only $305 per year, less than a sixth of the price of regular Maya. However, that's still a lot more than Blender, which is completely free. But if you learn Maya, Will it pay for itself? Does it have enough of an edge in the industry to land you a job? To answer that question, I found this quote from a Maya pro of 11 years. My source is in the description. He says, all right, look, 
I've got 11 years of AAA experience and I'm going to be totally honest. Getting a job has a lot more to do with the range of application, where you're from, how you present yourself in the interviews. If you're in South America and want to work remotely, you need to apply to every job that specifically states South America as a supported region. If you're in California, you have a higher chance of being hired simply because more companies support California hires. The first thing I would do is craft a five minute reel that shows an extremely high level of work quality and a very high level of diversity as well. I was lucky enough to be the product owner of a PS5 leading feature for a AAA title, and that gets me a lot of interest. But I still admit there are better artists than me. Where I won't give an inch is that I don't think anybody can run the full gamut of a production cycle as well as I can. When asked what my best skill is, I don't say modeling or texturing, even though I wish that were true. My best skill is being able to conceptualize and see an idea through to completion. That's what makes me valuable. I just know how to get things done. Even if I'm not the most skilled artist, I'm the most relentless. That quote very well sums up the difficulty of justifying the money for Maya. Because so much of landing a job is not just technical skills, even though you need that too, but rather it's being able to communicate your potential value to your employer. And for all of those reasons, I'm gonna give the category of price to Blender because it's completely free. That leaves Blender winning five to three. That's why I personally use Blender. It has the technical capabilities to be able to handle what I do with video production for freelance, as well as what I do on YouTube and for my personal projects. But for you, Maya might be the winner. You might not care about the price of Maya and you want those industry standard plugins so that you can get a job in a studio. But hopefully this video helped to educate you on whether Maya or Blender is going to be a better fit for you. If you learned anything, I would really appreciate it if you would leave me a like, that would help me out a lot. And if you are interested in seeing my content in future, you're welcome to subscribe.